Y'all ready? We'll get started. Good morning. First, I want to thank our superintendent of public instruction, Mark Johnson, for being here. Uh, Senator Tillman, Senator Heiss as well. Uh, I think this is a, an important bill that we're going to roll out today, and we'll try to go over it, and then we'll, we'll open it up for questions. But uh, I'm happy to announce that together with Senator Tillman and Heiss, we are introducing a bill today that will set aside more money for school construction in our forest counties and for increasing principal and assistant principal pay statewide. I'm introducing this bill because of the deteriorating condition of our rural North Carolina schools cannot be ignored any longer. Almost two years ago, my office reached out to some of the state's neediest counties to hear directly from the superintendents and administrators of what they need or, or need or knew to be their most critical school construction needs. The feedback they provided at that time made it abundantly clear that rural counties are struggling and our students deserve better. Some counties reported needing major, major renovations while others require completely new facilities due to their age and disrepair. In one startling example provided by Dr. Barry Williams in Gates County, the roof of the Central Middle School was badly in need of repair, and mold and mildew problems had disrupted classes. A small room next to the gym where athletic equipment is kept had a roof that did not fully meet the attached wall, and mold and mildew was a recurring problem there. This room was also a disturbing reminder of a time before the schools were integrated and used to serve as a locker room for African American children. Another case was the one presented in Hertford County. Hertford County needs to build a new elementary school for 500 fourth to sixth grade students. Their facility is over 100 years old and inadequate in every way. The wiring, lighting, and heating are all recurring issues and the power is subject to failure and poor weather. There is no playground. At that time, he advised us there were serious school security issues. There had been three shootings over the last three years in that school's neighborhood. The school security system had a lockdown function, which had to be activated in one instance where parties involved in the shooting ran right across the front of the school. I'm advised these counties are working to address these problems and others, but they need help. And they're not alone. Two years ago, hundreds of local leaders descended on Raleigh, answering a call I made to them to come and talk about the needs in their communities. Back then, we heard from county commissioner who said his county hadn't built a new school in over three decades. And a school superintendent who still relied on a 75-year-old bus garage, even though the buses won't fit all the way inside. There are countless other examples, and that is why I'm introducing this bill to provide more funding for school construction in Tier 1 and Tier 2 counties. Currently, we allocate $100 million for public school construction needs from the lottery, but these funds are distributed on a headcount basis. The result is that in fiscal year 15-16, all 40 Tier 1 counties receive just $11 million of the $100 million. Hyde and Terrell counties received $40,000 each. You can't even fix a roof with $40,000. Conversely, under the existing lottery formula, the school construction dollars tier three counties receive is $47 million in that same year, with just two counties, Wake and Meck, receiving the bulk of these funds at $10 million each. This bill will set up a needs-based public school capital fund that will be administered by the Superintendent of Public Construction. The fund will be available to Tier 1 and 2 counties based on their critical deficiencies. But it will also look at counties' ability to generate property tax and sales tax revenue. As you have heard me say, one cent property tax increase in my county, Jones County, generates about $75,000. That is not even a drop in the bucket of what is needed to finance a major renovation much less a new school. I know the same is true in many rural counties across the state. We are also including a matching requirement for Tier 1 and 2 counties so that we can stretch these dollars as far as possible. Finally, I will add that this is a completely new and separate fund in the lottery. 
totaling $75 million. And, it, and we're not adjusting in any way the existing $100 million per capita fund I previously <coughs> mentioned. The Tier 3 counties will continue to receive the amounts I mentioned under the existing formula. This change will supplement existing funding streams and most importantly, prioritize the critical school needs in our poor rural counties. I will let Senator Tillman discuss the components of this bill which address principal and assistant principal compensation. Thank you, Senator Brown, for your help and coordination with this uh, multifaceted bill. Thank you, Senator Heiss, uh, for your help and expertise. And we're certainly glad to have Mark Johnson, our school superintendent here, who will uh, be administering these dollars to the school superintendents of the systems. Uh, I've been wanting to, for a long time, fix the principal and assistant principal pay and to make it meaningful <coughs> where you can put key people in key spots. We don't have that now. You, uh, you pay in principal now based on the year's experience and the size of the school and uh, degrees. That's not the best way to pay a super executive of a, a large a complex organization like a school. You have got to put the best people in the best spots and you've got to have money to recruit these people. If you want to turn around any high school you can name, or any middle school or elementary school who may be low scoring, dirty, environment's bad, morale's bad, discipline terrible, test scores, you got to be able to put the muscle there. So I'm proposing that we take 7% uh, and put it on top of us, all the average principal salaries, put it in a pot. 7% above what they're getting now. And uh, with these uh, enhancements and a couple more I'll tell you about, there are three areas that we want to fix. Principal, we want to put a bonus program in. We've talked about some merit things forever. We've never done that. Put some things in there that have money attached to them. We've done that for low wealth. Now, low wealth will get uh, these, these bonus monies. Uh, everybody will get the 7% uh, to go to the pot. And then fix the assistant principals. This bill does all of that. Uh, Second thing it will do, it will take uh, the low wealth counties and uh, have uh, five areas that are critical to uh, the operation of a school that I think and many others uh, that you can get a $1,000 bonus, up to $5,000 every time you meet those five criteria. Uh, then the assistant principals, we're taking uh, all the average assistant principal salaries and putting a 13% above the A schedule. That will keep them always above the teachers, so you don't have teachers making more than assistant principals, and we've got that in several places. So you've got people in charge of faculty, and yet faculty making more money. 13% on top of the A schedule, and any time that there are raises and so forth from then, they'll get the same thing. So that's fixed. That's what it does. It's about what, 20, a little over 25 million. Right? Of the principal base. The, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, 24.6 million, and you can't figure it exactly because you don't know how many are going to get the bonuses and how many are not. But it won't exceed 26, uh, 24.6 million. That could be the most. Now, this, that, that other part with bonuses. Now, remember, the first part of the bonuses is year one. Everybody gets 2,600 dollars. Every principal that gets the base up to, and the seven percent. So we're trying to get off of 50th in the nation. Can't have a good school without a good principal, so we got to got to get moved there. And about 4.1 million to fix the assistant principals, and about 6.7 million for the bonus program. So that that's the, that's it in a nutshell. And if Senator Brown or I or Ralph. Senator Heiss wants to say anything. Okay, Senator. Well, I did, uh, in getting into this, I know that uh, there's a little, uh, <coughs> coming up with the funding. What we didn't want to do is take. Um, the obligation that has not traditionally been the state's for school construction and put it on the general fund so we've kind of pulled those funds out and kept those outside the general fund for those appropriations I would just say being from a rural area I come from somewhere where a new school in a community is a once-in-a-lifetime event uh, that's what coming in I come to Wake County and here I'm talking about how many new schools we're building this year uh, that's what coming in and it's a completely different environment and I've you know, I've been to our schools when the roof starts leaking during a rival high school basketball game uh, and others, and county commissioners are struggling when they can only raise seventy or 80000 with a cent of uh, one cent sales tax increase to be able to keep up with their schools. And what we're seeing is with flat and in some cases even declining populations of students due to aging in the population as well as 
migration to urban areas, um, it's difficult to keep your schools functioning and it becomes a spiral in of itself. If you don't have quality facilities and others, it's hard for your real estate values to stay up. It's hard to get recruited individuals and industries to come in. This is the top question. When industries come into communities, they want to go visit the schools. Uh, and see what exists and so if we're going to not make these investments in rural areas uh, then we're going to continue a spiral that so many of our rural areas are fighting with right now um, I think we've handled the issues with variances in the funding and others to make this something that can be very meaningful uh, and hopefully change the back to the original commitment of the lottery funds that potentially never existed that these funds will be given for things over and above the funding of basic education Mark any comments? Uh, I just I want to thank these gentlemen standing next to me in the General Assembly for all the hard work that has gone into this. Uh, education is the great equalizer of opportunity. Every student, no matter what neighborhood they're from, no matter whether their county is rural or, or urban, should be able to go to their school, get a great education, work hard, and reach their American dream. And these gentlemen have provided big, bold, innovative ideas to get our best leaders into schools and to improve our schools to be in the condition that they should be in in the 21st century for our students and teachers. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you Mr. Superintendent. All right. Well, I've got enough questions. You're bound to have one. All right. Of course. Uh, can you tell me, uh, <clears throat> okay, the money for the principals, assistant principals, and bonuses, that's general fund money, right? Or is lottery, that also lottery? Lottery dollars. All of these. Okay. Are lottery dollars. Will the lottery fund, I mean, you're talking about a pretty sizable increase in spending the lottery revenue. Will the lottery's revenues support this? Well, Senator Brown, we've got about $100 million in the reserve now, and the lottery has been growing mm -hmm. uh, and will continue to grow. Uh, we should be well within, uh, we're, we're only talking about 75 plus, uh, we're talking about $100 million is about all we're talking about here. And uh, a lot of these things won't, uh, won't come on board right away. <coughs> Some of it uh, on the school construction piece will come out of the reserve in the first year. In the second year, it catches up where you won't need to go there any longer. Uh, it does raise the advertising from 1% to 2%. Okay. Uh, it does take uh, over... Um, some of the surplus, uh, which was, I think I've got that number, about 13 million uh, was in surplus from this past year, so it uses those dollars as well. The follow-up, Senator Brown, so would any existing programs that get money from the lottery, would they get less because of this? They would not. Okay. Senator Brown, I'm wondering if the construction piece is going to help with some of the um, size and classroom space needs due to the um, class size limitations. I wonder if that's going to help address that. I guess it, there's a possibility it could, but in most cases in rural North Carolina, we're talking about facilities that are 30, 40, 50 to 100 years old. And uh, they are in desperate need for repair uh, and replacement. Uh, so that's the main piece of this, is, is trying to help those counties. And I think the important piece of this as well, in a lot of these counties, if you fix their problem, they're fixed for 40 to 50 years. So you don't have to go back. And uh, so the dollars begin to stretch out further and further as you fix some of these particular counties. Because in a lot of cases, they have one high school, one middle school, maybe two, three, four elementary schools. That's all they have. So you fix their problems, then, then they're fixed for 40 to 50 years. Can, can this work without um, expanding advertising because you know the house hasn't always been on board with that well it's been discussed this piece has been discussed for the past several years I think on expanding advertising even the governor's budget he expands the advertising piece so you know I think it's it's a matter of time honestly uh, that that's going to happen and we just think that we're getting ahead of this and using the money where we think it's needed most it's only common sense if you're gonna have a lottery not to make it pay right and you can't make it pay without doing a little advertising. I'd say 2% uh, is a very low advertising amount of dollars to gain you a whole lot of good school programs and uh, make school construction go to those poor counties. So I've never quite understood that argument that uh, you don't want to advertise. Yet we want to have it. We want to gamble, but, but don't let us gamble much, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they're saying. 
And just kind of uh, nuts and bolts of this, do you anticipate this being run separately or incorporating it into your budget? This is a separate bill that will be rolled out this afternoon. Okay. 